All right, hi, welcome to the taiga biome. You are probably wondering right now, what is a taiga biome if you haven't played Minecraft before? However, taiga biome also exists in real life. This is a pretty, pretty accurate representation. Thanks, Minecraft. You're welcome. So, this is the taiga biome. Taiga biome, uh, also known as boreal forest, is basically a wintry and cold forest, evergreen forest biome located in northern Canada and Asia and Europe. Here we're going to explore. Some thing I wanted to talk about since we're here are these evergreens as you can kind of see in Minecraft. Um, they're kind of in a strange conical shape. Well, this is because it it um, prevents snow from staying on the branches and weighing them down a lot, which would cause branch breaking, of course. Another adaptation that they have is they don't have leaves, they have needles, so that they don't lose as much water during freezes and dry spells. So let's go down the hill here and we'll talk about Oh no, let's just stay up here right now and talk about ecological succession. So ecological succession is basically when like nature is like reclaiming itself after a natural disaster. And so at first the soil is I mean after a fire the soil is replenished with nutrients after the fire. And so then you'll start seeing grasses and um, low shrubs all over the place and this kind of starts out the cycle with um, like smaller animals oh it started raining okay this um, starts out the cycle and smaller animals you know have little habitats and food and stuff and then you get into um, you know the small bushes and tree and I mean big bushes and small trees and once again just slightly larger animals and then you get to things like this which are you know the big trees which provide homes and food for many animals and the final stage is actually when the trees die and it provides you know lodging for birds that um, live in hollow in the hollows of trees all right so let's talk about these guys you might be thinking pigs don't live in the taiga well they don't you know, we're just pretending that these pigs are snowshoe hares or um, wolverines or something because <laughs> no, wolverines aren't prey or ermine because they are the prey of the taiga guys so these guys are you know near the bottom of the food chain because they eat the because they eat the you know grasses and stuff like that and like this guy so they eat the grasses and things like that and what eats them higher up whoa okay not this guy oh my god get away guy oh my god what is it? they never hit Oh my god. Get away, get away, get away, get away. Oh, jeez. And it just runs away like that. Oh, cash. Oh god, they're everywhere. Oh, he's dead. Okay. Wow, that was an ordeal. Anyway, let's ignore that. That was not the pre predator I was talking about. I was actually talking about, um... Let me see if I can find them. I went the wrong way. And so now I can't find them. Yeah, check it out. You can fly in Minecraft. In in certain modes. No, this is the one I was just at. So while we're up here, let's talk about the rain and what this kind of represents. Just ignore the zombies down there. So what the rain represents is kind of a density independent event or control 
which you know will affect the population equally no matter what its size is. And, and this rain could also represent snow, ice, hail, sleet, anything that is going to maybe cause a freeze, lack of resources, or abundance of resources. Density independent, I mean density dependent control would be something like a parasite, which would spread easier if there's more people, or um, food scarcity, which would probably happen, you know, if there were more um, creatures eating food, then there would be less food for the creatures eating the food, if that made sense. Um, I don't know if I can find that. Oh my god. Oh my god, guys. So anyway, you're getting a nice, uh, the nice biome scenery, as you can see, and also some nice monsters, because they are totally in the taiga biome. They are totally in the taiga biome. Whoa, okay. Zombies are kind of uncalled for, you know what I'm saying? They were here earlier, I saw them. Is this the hill we were at? No? I don't think so. I went up a hill and I said, I'm gonna come down and I'm gonna find it. Okay. You know what? We're not gonna find it. So. So, let's just jump down here. This, these here, Yes, you could spawn creatures. These are examples of predators in the taiga biome. And for real, wolves are predators in the taiga biome. These could also represent lynxes, hawks, foxes, stuff like that, that eat, you know, smaller animals like that pretend ho snowshoe hare over there. Another thing that we can talk about while well, on the subject of things eating other things, or, you know, such, <laughs> stuff like that. Um, autotrophs versus heterotrophs. And an autotroph is an organism that produces its own food, such as, for instance, this evergreen tree. Well, it's actually a spruce tree. And these ferns, and uh, these ferns, and this flower, and the grasses. These are autotrophs because they produce their own food. Now this guy here, this pretend snowshoe hare, is a heterotroph because he eats the food that the autotrophs provide and takes the energy that the autotrophs provide. So, oh, well, there's a pool there. So, that is the difference, if you were wondering the difference. And these guys are actually snowshoe hares, if you were wondering. No, just kidding, they're pigs. Um, so yeah, this is the taiga biome, and it's pretty well represented in Minecraft. I'd say normally, in real life, it snows in the taiga biome when there's precipitation. But um, in Minecraft, it only starts snowing at a certain elevation. So, hope you enjoyed it. Scenery is pretty nice here, although it's pretty cold. And only, you know, certain animals are going to be able to withstand that, those sort of temperatures and can, environmental conditions. So anyway, I hope you learned something about ecology. And I hope you maybe learned something about Minecraft. Alright, bye.